today i think i need to go and get a gift because i all right let me get my life together and i'll help and do this show because some nobody there reminded me nobody reminded me i should have reminded myself this is terrible this is horrible i am last year i was good i was good i i made sure i went out weeks before i have to worry about it and when my kids reminded me <laughs> Okay, all right, no, all right. I need to get my life together. Pack it up, put it in my chest, and run into the D-line. It is a beautiful day. I'm your girl, Al Jess Diamond, and this is, I'm just saying. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Kiana. What's up, Bernie? How you doing? Listen, we have a lot to talk about this morning. We have a lot to talk about. I don't want to talk about Kanye. I don't want to talk about Kanye, but I do want to talk about, uh, what he's opened up, the box that he has opened up, the conversation that is now streaming and flowing down my Facebook. But before we get into that, you know how I start every morning off. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to y'all. Good morning, good morning, good morning to y'all. Hey, I hope you slept well, Periscope, because I prayed for you. Good morning, good morning, good morning to y'all. Good morning to A-Train. Good morning, Heather. Good morning to JN. Good morning to Kim. I hope you slept well, Keith, because I pray for you, Kayana. Good morning to Blur the Doctor. Good morning to Jay and everybody else who's logging in. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, it is, again, a beautiful morning, and let's get into it. Let me shout out my folks who are celebrating a birthday, but today's, I'm just saying, it's brought to you by the Queen Rising Movement. De make sure that you visit www.queens, with an S, queensrising.com, www.queensrising.com, and find out what they have going on, because uh, they are a big support to this show. I'm just saying, let me shout out my folks who are celebrating birthdays today. Today, this morning, Christopher Barnhill is celebrating a birthday. Hey, boo, how you doing? I saw they surprised you at your job. That was too cute. Toya Richardson is celebrating a birthday. Mr. Mike James is also. Uh, Miguel Caminero is celebrating a birthday today. Miss Alicia Lewis is celebrating. Miss Angie Lee is celebrating a birthday. Miss Tian Jordan, how you doing, Tian? Uh, Mr. Clinton Baldwin is celebrating a birthday. Halima Ali is also celebrating a Mr. Yaddo, Yaddo the Prince. All right, yeah. It's celebrating our birthday today. So, happy birthday to them. Happy birthday to them. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to them. And I said, what's that number one zodiac sign? Not yours. I said, now what's that number one zodiac sign? Not yours. 
Is it Aries? Boo, is it Taurus? No, is it Scorpio? No, is it Pisces? No, Sagittarius? No, is it Gemini? Oh, oh, the rock in DC, young fly brother today. Hey, the, the, you, lo, you talking about the rock, like with the rock, with the rock hard thighs? A train, that's what you talking about? You talking about. You talk, you talking, you talking about the man I had dream. Uh, okay, all I've said is happy birthday, Rock. I'm gonna have to do something special for him. DC Young Fly. I ain't worrying about him. Okay, I ain't really worried. The number, no, it's not Virgo. Oh, this. <laughs> the number one zodiac sign, Mr. Ivan, has it correct. The number one zodiac sign is Libra. Okay? Go Libra. I'm a Libra. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Even as fine as the rock is, his zodiac sign is still not a number uno. Okay? And not so uno. Okay? The number one zodiac sign. Oh, let me move on. So, uh, we get my life together and uh, move on. Because it is time for the spill yes it is get ready baby let's call this time exactly what it is what a spill what a spill what a spill hey hey i want to spill uh uh i want to spill hey hey i want to spill Ooh. Ooh. you gotta feel that thing right there What's the dealio? What's the happiness? What's the going on? What's the 411? What's popping off in the streets? What's the word on the streets this morning? What's up? In go see. In go see. Sister, in go see. In the house. Good morning. No, Keanu, you was late with that Leo stuff. All right. And, um, oh, this is not trash. Listen, listen. Our White House is being run by like it's a mob like this is the the uh, mob story like what is going on so if you have not been watching the news and you've been, been paying attention to other things like black twitter and we'll get to that later and all the shenanigans that's been going on over there because of the tmz story if you have not been paying attention to what has been actually going on in the news this should have caught your attention because um our president is a gangster Okay, he's a gangster, and he's hired a lot of other gangsters to work with him. He runs his businesses, all of his businesses like a gang. I mean, how gangster is it for you to go to Forbes magazine and say, look, this is what I want up in there. And Forbes magazine puts it in there, and then you take that Forbes magazine, and you take it to the bank and tell them, look, this is what I'm worth. Now give me your money. Like, like that is gangster. I don't care what nobody says. Like, you got to kind of respect his gangster because that's some real gangster privilege stuff to do. All right. No, I'm not going to respect it. But I'm just saying, it's, it's, it happens. It worked. But would it have worked if it was like me going to Forbes saying, I make this amount of money and I'm going, you know, I'm a business insider and this is what I make. And then I go to the bank. Could I go to the bank with the magazine and say, look, my name is on here for Forbes and I make this amount of money. Okay, no. Okay. So anyway, y'all's president has done stuff like that, but y'all's president has also hired his goons. Now, with the with the trial that they're having with him uh, or, or the investigation with, with Stormy and all that stuff, she said that a man came up to her. And she uh, also uh, uh, did a sketch, uh, 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 created a sketch of what the guy looked like and told her that she needed to whatever he threatened her and all that stuff, right? But the, the, I, this, this story just sounds, oh, so... Hmm, I've heard this thing before. So, this happened with the, uh, with uh, Tang's doctor, with his doctor that he had before him, um, uh, before he became president. So, the polar doctor, polar doctor, he says that, that that letter that was made, that was written before he came into office where it says that he would be the most physically fit and uh 
uh, healthiest president ever to have been. Like, y'all know that was his words. Like, y'all know that was y'all's president's words. And so now it has come out that, yes, the president actually penned that letter himself that did not come from the actual doctor, his actual physician who was taking care of him. Harold Bornstein is his name. Not only that, Harold Bornstein also stated and let people know that Tang's goons came into his office and took his medical records. Now again, um, because of HIPAA, because of the way that we handle uh, uh, medical records, the doctor is always supposed to keep the cop um, keep your medical records and then they receive a copy of it like the person if you if you want something you go in and you get a copy of it correct so that's what happened uh that but that's what's supposed to happen but no y'all's president sent his goons in and instead of getting copies they just strung on their way in there scared everyone in there uh, uh the nurses and all that stuff and the doctor told him to shut up knock them over and said i'm just i'm just making up some added up stuff because i i envision they kicked down the door bow they, they did they did they kicked down the door they were like bow and then 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 they went up in there and it was like you will give me those records Give me Trump's records now or I'm going to burn this place down. And then, then then, after they said that, the doctor was like, no, I would never do that. And then they were like, you going to do it. And then he put a gun up to his head and all that stuff. And then there was a tussle. And then the nurse came up in there. She's like, what's going on? What's going on? And then it was like, this is all playing out in my head that way. And they were like, shut up, heifer, before we shoot you too. Get over in that corner. Find me those records. And then there's somebody got them the records. And then they just went off. And then the doctor and the nurse just sat in the office trembling. Because they didn't know what else to do. Okay, so so that's how I figured it went on. <laughs> That's how I figured that they went all. So it was like nobody in the world, Jay says, nobody in the world would get away with this if they tried. Nobody except for the mob. The mob does stuff like this. This is the these are the people that that Tang hung around. These are the people that 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 his father hung around. Because we heard that his father was notorious in the stuff that he did. Blah blah blah. You <laughs> the white version of shit now. Yes! King out of you. You said it. You said it. I was about to say, this is really Death Row Records. Death Row White House. Like, for real. This is like, this like, Tang is like, go get it. You heard about this? Like, like, Tang is, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's crazy and nobody act like they want to believe all the people that are his supporters don't want to believe it but this is the truth because this man is now saying that um again his he's afraid for his life now he he came out and said that that tang wrote his own letter you you wrote your own letter see now when you think about the things that he was saying um saying that obama could have written in his own or doctored up his own um, birth certificate. It sounds like, yeah, maybe he would think that somebody would be a liar like him and be able to falsify information like that because he does it himself. And so everything that he does, he, he goes on and he reflects that and he thinks that that's uh, everyone else does or lives their life the same way that he does. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Uh, so, uh, poor little doctor. I'm so scared for the little doctor, Harold Bornstein. Poor little Harold go show up missing. But the, but the crazy part is, he said that, uh, they came because Tang didn't want nobody to know that he was taking medication for his hair. 
propecia medicine. You know, the propecia for alopecia. He, they, he didn't want nobody to know that he was taking medicine to make that little rat's nest grow on his head because he has alopecia and, and balding and all that stuff. Oh, wow, for real? So that's what the doctor said. They quote unquote, he was so worried about uh, that he had to take medicine for that. Well, if you have to take medicine for that, well, you know what other medicines? Okay. All right, because I'm just saying, and he don't look like uh, he could get it up. Like the Hulk, y'all didn't see the movie. But I'm just saying, like, like, all right, no, all right. Am I going too far? Am, am I going too far? Y'all go, y'all go get my content blocked and I'm going to be in Facebook jail messing around. Messing around. No, he is not a Libra. No, he is not a Libra. He is a... A Gemini. And he's a Gemini. Something like that. No, Nigel. He ain't no Libra. I can tell you that. But uh, he handling business like, like a Libra. Strong arming and things. Getting stuff done. Okay, no. No. I, I, don't even, I don't even want that comparison. All right. Let me get my life together because we have to move on. And I don't want to talk about him for too long. This is my question of the day. Are we still living in slavery? are we um uh y'all's y'all's favorite rapper in the entire in the entire world um has gotten a lot of people talking and i put i posted on my page earlier uh today about um how we are uh, I believe that he was wrong in what he said about slavery being a choice back then. But I believe that um, slavery is a choice that we have um, uh, today. And uh, we, we choose mental slavery. We choose other types of slavery every single day. And the re reason why I say it's a choice today is because... Uh, the knowledge and information is out there for us to receive, to read, to, to get a better understanding of. And a lot of people choose to stay with it or stay um, putting themselves in it. Now, a lot of people, uh, there were uh, people who, uh, who stated that they didn't agree with me. And that is all right if you don't agree. Because I'm going to read a... Um, a, uh, a um, uh, for my girl, Lania, um, uh, uh, Miss Cordero, she said, uh, the huge miss to me is the word, word choice. I also understand the idea of what you mean, but we are going to stretch that thought. But if we are going to stretch that thought, anybody with a job is a slave. Anybody doing what they have to do to um, something they want is a slave. The high-paid athletes, us everyday people, whenever we feel like it, we can walk away and say, F this. If they are slaves to anything, it's not the employers, it's the money and the lifestyle. And again, and still again, it's what they want. I mean, if I think most of us would rather wake up every day doing what we really would like to desire and like magic, blah, 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 have a clean home, blah, 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 and three generations of wealth for your family. But uh, she said anything that makes you that type of money and can feed the next generations of your family doesn't feel like slavery to me. And again, I think that we can agree to disagree at this point because you can be a slave to money. You can definitely be a slave to money. There were some other people that commented on that also, and they also stated that um, uh, some of the sentiments that she said as the far as these young guys, and, and I only use this as a visual because we need it like, like we are visual people. We need to visualize it. We need to see it. And it's not just athletes we have entertainers who are slaves to the industry we have uh, we have people who are slaves to every type of industry because they feel like there's no way out but 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 i believe that knowledge is also a way out a lot of these people are slaves to the con um to even the um contracts that they sign because the information is put right in front of them. But instead of taking the time to read it, they just sign it. They sign themselves off. It's a form of slavery because they don't know the terms of these contracts that they are signing. Not only that, um, another person uh, stated that, hey, uh, hey, Algiers, 
uh, well, we need to teach these young men how to handle their finances. Yes, you can be a, a, a slave to your finances, especially if you don't understand how it works. That's why every Monday I have Money Mondays for you guys where I have a financial advisor who used to play in the league explain to you how finances work and how this financial institution that we call America works so that we can get ourselves out of the bondage of the slavery of finances. He told a story on on Monday about a young man that was that got in the league at the same time that he did. And since he didn't understand it, the first thing that he did was went and bought six cars. He went and bought six vehicles and didn't even have a house. Wow. So you bought a you bought six cars, but you couldn't even house it. But then he had to realize, okay, well, I got six cars. I don't have no place to put them. So now I need to buy a house. Now I need to buy a house. So I need to have a house that, that can fit all these cars. Yes, he was able to get it because, of course, they gave him some money up front. Boom, bam, he went and got it. But he didn't think about the upkeep of said house with said, so many rooms with all of the things and all of the uh, the gadgets and all of the things that he that he desired inside the house. He didn't think about upkeep. He didn't think about injury. He didn't think about you know uh, the 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 real life th things that happens. He didn't know about taxes. He didn't know about HOA. He didn't know how high that, that light bill could get up in one of the mansions. He didn't, like, like, these are things I didn't know. So he became a slave to the NFL and a slave to the money because he had to continue on doing that in which he couldn't walk away from even if he didn't want to be there, if he decided he didn't want to play ball no more, but he had to become a slave to it. Why? Because he had to keep up with the money that he was getting because if he didn't, he was going to lose it all because he didn't know anything else about finances because the league didn't teach him. And of course, before you get into the league, they starve you. Now tell me when I'm wrong. When they, they starve you before you get into the league. They have you playing college ball. The, the schools get millions and billions of dollars off of you playing college ball. And then they tell you that you can't um, accept any gifts. That you can't get any financial gifts. That you can't get no extra pair of shoes from another place. Or uh, You're not supposed to do that. And they give you your little stipend or whatever. They, they feed you, but they don't pay you. And then, so they're starving you. And so when, when the uh, NFL, the NBA, or whatever comes up to you and says, I'm, old, I'm going to pay you this amount of money and you haven't finished your education but I'm still going to pay you this money, amount of money to go and play up in this league boom, bam, what you think they're going to do sign on that dotted line without realizing that they cannot kneel and they don't need to speak because if they speak out towards something that they're passionate about and something that they're worried about, they're going to take the money that they gave them away from them and, uh, and make it difficult for them to even make any more because they're going to blackmail you And they blackmailed these young men. They, they blackmailed Ka Kaepernick. I said it. Nobody, nobody wants to touch him with a 10-foot pole, no matter how good his arm is. They'd rather put some, some uh, mediocre uh, quarterbacks in there over Kaepernick just because he stood. For what he believed in. Or he kneeled for what he believed in. Miss me with the. Uh, they making millions of dollars. And it ain't slavery to me. Hell that sounds like slavery to me. If I can't speak out against it. Against something that I believe. That sounds like slavery to me. We are so mentally enslaved. The shackles went around our brains. And then all they say, oh, well, maybe the families are supposed to teach them. But that would be, that's nice. But there are more people up in these families that, uh, that want something rather than give something like information or knowledge.
get you some money and find out what it's like to have an auntie come out of nowhere. Oh, I'm your auntie from your second cousin, my blonde side and blonde and girl and boy. Oh, I'm so proud of you. I changed your diapers. Let me borrow something. Everybody be begins to feel like you owe them for what you work for. And ain't nobody trying to help you get no financial literacy so that it can, it can last more than 10 or 15 or 20 years. I'm speaking on it because I'm passionate about it because I understand what that, what that, what that mentality is like. I was a slave to um, where I was working at in my position and what I was doing because, hey, hell, when you're making six figures at 23 years old in the industry, oh, yeah, you loving life. I mean, I was, I didn't, wasn't cooking. I wasn't cleaning nothing. I had a maid for that. I was, I didn't want to do any of that. I'm making I'm making money on top. I'm making stacks on stacks on stacks for myself at 23 years old. But I'm going into work crying every daggone day. I'm going into work hating life. I'm going to work. Like, and, and I could not, I couldn't stand for anything either because of who I was working for. I couldn't stand for nothing. I was a slave. Oh my God. I heard a buzzing going on in my house. And it was a bee, actually. It was actually a bee. Uh, get my life together. But we can't allow ourselves to think that, um, that we aren't slaves and, and slavery isn't going on right now. Listen, if you want to teach these young men something, teach them on the field and off the field. Stop giving them the answers to test. Stop passing them just because you feel like they they have uh, the opportunity to get to the NBA or the NFL or the NHL or whatever it is. Stop giving them and pushing them through and when they get to college, somebody else is doing their work for them. Stop doing that. Give these kids a chance because knowledge is power. Give them the opportunity to learn about finances. Put them up in those classes. If, 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 the, if the NFL and NBA wanted these kids so bad, they would make them take a course in finances. So that they can understand what they are getting into. The next level. So that they can level up. And then the wealth will be generational. But it's not generational. It's one generation. How many, how many guys from the league, y'all know, bit was in the league and then came back to the neighborhood and they ain't got nothing else to show for it now because they didn't know or they got an injury or whatever it was. Jay say they don't care. No, they don't care. And yes, we are still living in slavery. And and y'all can point, y'all can, what's up, Joe Jackson? Y'all can point and say that they're making money. They don't sound like slavery to me. But I'm just saying, it feel like we still receiving scraps off the table. They only allow these entertainers to get to a certain level. They don't want them. And then all of a sudden, they have tax issues. And they throw you in jail, no matter how big you are. Throw you in jail for your tax issues. Because they want theirs. How many of these entertainers, y'all stories, y'all watch, y'all watch the uh the the show on on um uh TV one or whatever, where are they now and all the other shows that they have talking about them and they talk about um uh and they talk about uh how 
uh, their managers had them sign these contracts and these contracts and everybody was taking it. By the time they got off tour, they was working and they was all excited about working and they get their check and they have nothing. Just because you sign a contract don't mean that you're not uh, a slave. It, it's so, it, it, maybe y'all don't want me to use that word. You're in bondage. Maybe, maybe you want, maybe I would use that because slavery is too harsh of a word, but maybe you're in bondage. And some of us continue to enslave ourselves. We have ideas for businesses. We have ideas for this. We have all these things. But instead of um, doing research, instead of looking it up, instead of getting more, like, instead of getting out there and getting yourself together so that you can start it, y'all just stay where y'all are, working for someone else. Because you're too afraid. And fear is also bondage. I can talk about it all day long. I can talk about it all day long. But you know what? I ain't got time for that. Let me move on because I didn't give y'all. I didn't give y'all. Y'all gonna be mad at me for this one. Y'all gonna be mad at this one. Facebook is bringing 3D pictures. Listen. Listen, 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 Facebook. If there's anything that you would... um need to hear this this is this is what i need to tell you facebook they got a lot of people on my friends list they got some real ugly kids some real ugly grandkids and they post a lot of pictures and the worst thing that you could do facebook take off these glasses because I need y'all to see my eyes. The worst thing that you could do Facebook is make them joints in 3D. Someone's going to get hurt. Um, There are going to be some, some heart attacks or some strokes or some blindness. Some things people are going to start suing you Facebook. Um, Y'all don't need to take a step into that direction. There are some pictures of of some um, people that post that think they're cute. And um, I just think that it could be the wrong direction to go into right now at this point. Um... Then y'all just come off with Capitol Hill getting questioned about things that happen. I wouldn't want y'all to have to go back to Capitol Hill to get questioned about um, somebody's long-lasting uh, erection that killed them from some of these bootylicious posts that some people put up and some of these videos it I think it'll be way too much I just I just think that's too much I think that's the reason why like pornography and all that stuff isn't in in 3d because somebody's gonna die from I'm just saying I've been seeing some some pictures of some fine fine things you know what I'm saying that's some, some fine uh specimens of men and I don't need my mama you know, coming through my Facebook page and seeing a picture of some fine guy. And I, I want my mama to stay here as long as possible. All I'm saying is we don't need, we don't need that, okay? It, it's it's the wrong move to make. This technology needs to be tested out on like a smaller scale. Maybe, maybe uh, like the cute baby pages or something like that. Maybe. But, but because we know there are cute babies there, that might work out. But I just, I've done seen some babies straight out the womb being posted right here on my page. And their parents, grandparents, aunties, sisters, cousins should have just waited until the baby's skin wasn't as... You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if they would have just... 
let the baby grow into um, some. Look, now was not the time. Now is not the time. I can go through my friends list right now. I can go through my friends list right now, and we don't need. We don't need. Um, we don't need um, 3D pictures of Ambrose. No, we don't need 3D pictures of Tony Frederick popping up on here. We don't need 3D pictures of my cousin Otis. We don't. We don't need that. We don't need 3D pictures of um, of my daddy because I swear that my if my daddy gets the technology to do some 3D pictures, all he gonna do. All he going to do is take a picture with a belt in his hand and it's going to scare me. We don't need 3D pictures of that right now. Like, we don't need 3D pictures of my pastor at all. He takes good pictures. Yes, he does. Love him to death. But we don't need 3D pictures because once you do the 3D pictures, then it might be 3D video. And he going to be like, where were you at church on Sunday? And then I'm going to be convicted. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't need all of that. This is just too much. Can we just keep it? Can we go back to um, to Facebook like 2.0 back in um, 2009? Can we go back to that one? Just asking for a friend. Because all of this is too much. Because I'm telling y'all, some of these people started using Periscope and uh, talking about broadcasting, and it was an ugly situation. It was a, uh, it was a ugly situation. It was ugly. I promise you, it was an ugly situation, and and uh, y'all realize that some of these. Okay, no, all right, all right. That's all. That's all I'm saying. I mean, that's all I'm saying. That that's all. That's all I'm gonna say from now. That's all I'm gonna say for now. But I just don't think that y'all should do it. I'm a very opinionated, opinionated person. Very. Very. And um, that's that's my opinion, but I think that y'all should uh, hold to my opinion, like take heed to it. Heather, I'm stopping. I'm okay. And if you don't agree with my opinion, remember, all blocks matter. I will block you. I'm going to block you if you don't agree. I'm just playing, but I will block you um, if you come into my inbox with any more of those chain letters. I'm blocking. I'm blocking. All blocks matter. I got on my Blairism today. That's, a, that's what I'm saying. I got on my Blairism today. Let me get my life together. Pack it up, put it in my chest, and run into the D-line because it's time for Black Facts. Black Facts. It's time for Black Facts. It's time for Black Facts for this day, May 2nd, 2018. And listen, if I don't come on tomorrow, I'm just telling you, it's because on my anniversary, I like to wake up to it. May 2nd, 1963, protesters were arrested in Birmingham. About 2,543 African-American and white civil rights demonstrators were protesting. Segregation were arrested and jailed in Birmingham, Alabama. Again, this day, May 2nd, 1963, and established 2,543 African-American and white civil rights demonstrators were protesting segregation and were arrested and jailed in Birmingham, Alabama. This day, May 2nd, 1992, Los Angeles began to clean up and rebuilding after the Rodney King riots. 58 deaths, 600 fires, and $1 billion of property damage happened on that night. May 2nd, 1992, again, Los Angeles began to clean up and rebuild it after the Rodney King riots, which uh, had 58 deaths, 600 fires, and $1 billion worth of property damage. Um, this day... Hmm. 
this is interesting. This title says, Slavery Purchased America's Freedom. It says, Slavery, slavery, slavery Purchased America's Freedom. While the white Americans profit from the slave trade, they actually benefited from the slave system to fund the war against England. As one historian put it, Americans actually purchased their freedom with products grown by slaves and traded to the French during the War of Independence. Before the war, agricultural products such as rice, indigo, and tobacco, all produced by enslaved Americans, were America's most valuable exports without the slave trade and and slavery. America would never have been able to generate the wealth to gain its freedom from England, at least in the 1700s. A member of the British Parliament acknowledged after the war that I know why not, we should not, uh, I know why we should blush to confess that slavery was an essential ingredient of American independence. I know not why we should blush to confess slavery was an essential ingredient of American independence. Those are your black facts for today, guys. Those were your black facts, black facts, those were your black facts. Where I'm um, is well, I think I'm gonna be at the woke, woke and woke, woke and woke, woke, woke. Um, this is May 11th, Friday, May 11th in Washington D.C. I'm the Algiers Diamond. Follow me on IG at Algiers um, at Algiers Diamond P R O D at gmail dot at gmail dot com. Remember, you woke up this morning. You woke up with the purpose. Walk in your purpose. Ask God to guide you in your purpose, and it will be perfected. Um. If I made you smile today, I did my job. If I made you laugh today, I did my job. If I taught you something new, I did my job. If I made you think today, I did my job. Now, all I'm asking you to do is do your job by hitting that share button and sharing it out to your friends and family so that they, they can um, continue on in the conversation, get this wealth of knowledge that I'm putting out there. You guys be great, be wonderful, have a wonderful day. And if I don't see you tomorrow, it's because tomorrow is my anniversary, okay? And all I'm saying is I don't care where you at or what you're doing i really i really don't i don't care what office you at don't be a slave just do what i'm asking you to do and give me some shoulder okay <laughs>